Hey everyone, Rick here. Guess what I'm going to say? If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I really appreciate it. With that said, let's get on with the video. I was driving down the road in town the other day, back here in the United States in Missouri, and I was thinking to myself, you know, about some of the things I missed about when I was in Thailand. I'm getting ready to go back in a couple months, and as I drove down the road, I was thinking about a lot of the different uh, differences between the two places that I see. One of the major things that just finally clicked with me as I was driving down the road, uh, I was going through one of the smaller towns here in Missouri that's got maybe 20, 25,000 people uh, in it, probably considered a midsize in the rural area I'm located. And I seen so many chain restaurants and strip malls, it was unbelievable. And it's, it's always the same thing any place you go. And I found, I started thinking, that's what it is, one of the items anyway, that I liked so well whenever I was over in Thailand. There are so many small businesses over there. And uh, it's, you know, little bitty mom and pop restaurants on the side or people that, you know, one owner businesses where over here in the United States, you have this huge, vast amount of really terrible food, as far as I'm concerned anyway. Things like Taco Bell, which is a big joke over here that if you eat Taco Bell, you better have a restroom close by. Uh, you know, lots of things like the Taco Bells, McDonald's, Burger Kings, uh, other uh big branch type or commercial corporate franchise type businesses as far as restaurants like big whiskeys or Applebee's or things like that. You also see a lot of chain uh, markets like Walmart. You can't go any place without seeing a Walmart. In uh, Missouri, and I believe it's Iowa, a convenience store uh, come and go, which is similar to the 7-Elevens that you see a lot of in Thailand. But where I see the major difference is when I was in Thailand, I could go to so many different little markets and they would have different t-shirt vendors or they would have different people cooking their food from their particular region. Like uh, when I was with my girlfriend, she would see a vendor and we'd go to eat and she would want to get their particular food because it was somebody from Isan region, northern Thailand, and she missed eating Isan style food. Well, I might see something that was from the area in southern Thailand, a different way that they uh, cooked their pork or their beef or whatever it was I was getting fish, and I might like that better. But the point is, is I would see all these little markets and all these little things there, and that's just something that you just don't see here. Uh, our government has strict, such strict control and regulations over the uh, restaurant and food industry I mean, it's just tough to get anything here. There's not a lot of diversity in what you see, be it in if there's such a thing as diversity in food. I guess there is. So uh, that's one of the big things. The other thing that I noticed is I could be in Thailand and not have to have a car. You could live in certain areas, and there is a vast amount of public transportation over there. There's all kinds of the little tuk-tuks and, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if it's, I think it's Grab over there that there's a lot of people that they use. And you can just always get a ride. There's buses, there's trains, there's tuk-tuks, there's people that just will tote you on their scooter or motorcycle, you know, for uh, a few baht and take you to different areas you want to go to. So transportation's not an issue over there. Here in the United States, you just about have to have a car. It would be virtually impossible unless you just stayed locally inside of a big city to not have a vehicle because, one, there's really not that many sidewalks unless you're in a, a big area or a city. Uh, there's not a lot of walking areas. Uh, they do have some areas marked on the roads sometimes for bicycles, but a lot of the towns and the cities, it's really not uh, bicycle or scooter friendly. Uh, it's pretty well automobiles or you're not going to go anywhere. And that makes a big difference if you think about somebody that's retired or somebody's trying to live on a lower budget because vehicles over here are extremely expensive. I believe they're, you know, comparable 
over in Thailand as far as expense because of import taxes. But, you know, you start adding in anywhere. I was talking to a buddy of mine, a car payment that, you know, his wife has a, a car that's older and lower end. They never buy new, but she's still paying something like 350 U.S. dollars a month. And then on his truck, he's paying about four or 450 dollars. And these are used vehicles, mind you. And so right there is 750 dollars a month. Well, when you think I can get a month's rent over in Thailand for half of that, I mean, you, you see where I'm going with this. It's, it's, these are some of the things that I'm noticing when I'm here. I also noticed a huge difference whenever I went to the grocery store. That's been killing me, you guys. Uh, our inflation is driving things through the ceiling over here. I went to the grocery store, and I'm a big uh, protein eater or meat eater. Uh, I don't eat a lot of carbohydrates. So I mainly eat beef and chicken or pork. And beef prices are unbelievable. I bought just a few low-grade, low-end steaks, a roast, and a couple other items at the store, along with some things like laundry detergent, a few things I needed. In general, I bought enough stuff to last me maybe possibly a couple of weeks, and I eat generally once a day. Uh, and I walked out of a Walmart store with a $200 bill. That's absolutely crazy. Uh, you know, that would last me for m more than a month if I would eat at small mom and pop establishments overseas. Uh, so that's part of my culture shock of coming back home. I got back home and I've seen these inflationary rates just keep climbing and climbing and climbing. Uh, I've also seen things with the housing market change a lot, uh, rent prices. Uh, luckily, I don't rent. I am buying or I own my home. And, you know, I, I hear people talk about it. Rent prices are through the roof. Some very small apartments and things like that will run up to $1,000, $1,200. And that's in rural areas or in Missouri where it's lower cost here. Uh, now, you get into places, I was talking to my buddy, and he was telling me that he had a friend that was, I believe, out in Utah, close to the border of California, somewhere around in there, and anyway, he said he was paying over $3,200 a month for a studio apartment, and he was happy to get it at that. So, my gosh, guys, you, you think about what your income is coming in, how inflation is raising, and you can see how if you've been overseas for three or four months, that you come back here and it takes about 30 days and you're just in shock. I mean, I'm seeing all these costs, the fuel prices, while comparable because you can get such cheap transportation on the tuk-tuks or trains or buses over in Thailand. You know, I pull in with a truck I've got that takes diesel fuel and diesel's up around $5 a gallon. And the truck's got a 30-gallon tank, so you do the math. I'm looking at $150 to fill a tank, you know, on this thing. And if I'm very lucky, I'll go two weeks. So we're looking at 300 bucks, you know, 300 US dollars a month to drive a vehicle to get around. And the other thing is, is my truck doesn't get that bad of mileage. I mean, it's a little bit worse than what, you know, other uh, vehicles are. It's ranging about 15 miles to the gallon, 14 or 15, somewhere in there. And a other old, old little minivan I've got that I use to get around in, it's only getting about 19. So it's impossible to justify going out and buying a different vehicle or getting an electric car or something like that where you're going to pay thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 for it. You're looking at if you do that on a new vehicle, you're, you're going to be paying, uh, you know, upwards, I don't know, I'd say seven to eight hundred dollars a month. So if you add those things together and you get that seven, eight hundred dollars a month and you add on another, you know, one hundred and fifty dollars worth of fuel and you do that type of thing. I mean, I can drive my old vehicles that get two or three miles to the gallon less. And it would take me a long, long time to see the return on investment, you know, buying a new vehicle. So that was another one of my culture shock things was I didn't even really think about my transportation when I was over there. One, I could walk about any place I wanted to go. 
Two, we could catch some buses that would take us into Bangkok or other places. If we wanted to travel someplace that was five or six hours away and didn't actually want to drive it, we could hop on a plane at one of the airports, and it was running about $70, $80 a person and just fly on a, you know, an hour flight to get somewhere. So it was just, you know, transportation didn't even really enter my mind a lot over there. It was a relatively cheap thing. So between the food, the shock of the housing market, uh, the inflationary rate here, and I know that Thailand has experienced, you know, prices going up in different areas, but my gosh, you guys, nothing like over here. Uh, this, it just really blew me away how it's got so out of control, and I'm not seeing an end to it at this point. At least uh, at this point in time with how, our, how the government is running and who's running the government, I should say, it's uh, our inflation just keeps going up, and they're just spending money like mad on things, absolutely going. They're spending like a, a drunken sailor on leave. Uh, it's just going, they're just going ape. So uh, that's some of the things that when I was going down the road and talking to my friend, I really, really miss about being over there was, uh, you know, the those that culture shock of the inflation and all of that over here has just been massive. Uh, last thing real quickly I'll cover, but it's the main thing I miss over there are the people. I really miss how I was treated when I was over there. Now, I'm talking about how I was treated by Thai people. And I'm not knocking expats or people from other countries. I don't mean to do that. I'm just saying different cultures are uh, from different areas like the United States or from Germany or from Sweden or different places like that. A lot of people just have different ways uh, about them. Maybe some countries or cultures a little more private than others, you know, whatever. But uh, what I'm talking about is just the friendliness. The friendliness of people over in Thailand, it just far exceeds what I see here. Uh, over here, I've got my friends that I hang out with and I cook out with. But as far as meeting new people and just having fun with them, even if you just meet them one time, when you go out to have a good time of an evening, say, go out someplace for dinner. I'd go out for dinner someplace. Somebody would come up. We'd start a conversation. We might sit there and have a beer and just shoot the bull you know, for a while, or just talk or take a few pictures with each other because they wanted a picture of a Farang and they wanted to be with me. They asked me about the USA. I'd ask them something about their restaurant. I cannot tell you how many times I'd go into a little mom and pop restaurant. The owner would come out and set and bring a beer out and set and just talk with me. And, you know, you just don't get that going into Taco Bell or Big Whiskies or Applebee's here. You know, anybody who lives here knows, you know, as far as it goes over here, most people are scared to say anything. They're always afraid you're going to uh, offend somebody. You know, it's became a very uh, offensive uh, nation here. And so it, it's just not easy to go up and uh, have those social interactions that I would have over in Thailand. So that's the main thing that I want to point out that I missed over there. Well, the, the cost and the savings and the weather and the beauty of the country and all of that are all just huge pluses, you know, as far as I'm concerned. The people over there and the way I was treated, and I traveled from northern Thailand all the way down into southern Thailand and over into Laos, and I was just treated extremely well. I never felt unsafe, I never felt unwanted, and I never felt uncomfortable in any way. Uh, if anything, I felt like possibly I, I would do something culturally incorrect that I didn't understand. So, uh, you know, that would make the Thai people uncomfortable. But if I did, they were always genuinely forgiving and understood. So uh, that's about all I've got to say on this video. I just wanted to kind of let you guys know I was thinking about that and the culture shock. There's culture shock in two ways. Culture shock when you first go overseas into another country. And then after you've been there, if it's someplace uh, like Thailand that I enjoyed a lot, there is a tremendous culture shock whenever you come back home to the USA. And it wasn't in a positive manner. So with that, I'm going to end the video and say, take me back to Thailand. And guess what I'm going to say one more time? Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell for me. I really want to grow the channel. And remember, guys, you know, life is and time is a commodity that we just can't get back. So quit wasting your time. 
do what makes you happy and enjoy yourself. So this is Rick with the Excite Channel, and I'll see you guys soon.